Okay guys, welcome to Sean Dunn 3D Studio and today we're going to create stage curtains. And I'll go ahead and play that here. And you can see we've animated the curtains in Marvelous Designer and brought it back into Maya. So let's go ahead and start to get busy. Okay, let's get this project started. So we're here in Maya and I've created three pieces of geometry. I've got this wall and then right behind it there are two objects here and here. We'll use these objects as rails in Marvelous Designer to hang the curtains off of. Before we bring this to Marvelous Designer we need to make sure that we have animation on these rails which will essentially drive the simulation in Marvelous Designer. If you look down here at the timeline, you can see that I've already created a keyframe on frame 0 and a keyframe on frame 120. You'll also notice that my rails have moved. If I scrub the timeline, you'll notice they are animating open and at 120 they stop. You should also take note that I have a total of 300 frames, which adds an additional 6 seconds. And the reason for that is in Marvelous Designer, we need to give time for the simulation to come to a complete stop. Okay, with all that in mind, let's go ahead and, go ahead and bring this back to frame zero and select both pieces of geometry and let's export this out to Marvelous. So I'm gonna to go to Export Selection, make sure I'm on FBX. I've got a name up here, I'll just go ahead and rewrite over that. And the settings are very important. If you're importing into Marvelous Designer and you are using a Mac, this is extremely important. Although you can use Alembic, if you're going to use FBX on a Mac, you need to make sure that you have Bake Animation selected and Resample All. Those two things are very important. And of course, you need to make sure your frames are from start to end what you'd like. So let's go ahead and export the selection and here we go. And we'll go into Marvelous Designer now. Okay so here we are in Marvelous Designer and we need to import our FBX. So we're going to go up to File, Import, and FBX. We'll go ahead and select our FBX and hit Open. And we don't need to have arrangement points. We're going to deselect that. We've already got animation checked. And we are using centimeters, so we're going to hit OK. Now you might notice that when it comes in, there's not much happening. And if you try to simulate, nothing happens. And that's because we have nothing in the scene yet with Marvelous besides this geometry brought in from Maya. So in order to see the animation, we need to go up to the right-hand side and choose Animation. From there, you will see uh, the animation on both track. And if you scrub the animation, you'll also notice that we get the same exact animation we had in Maya. Okay, so now that we know that our animation is working, let's go ahead and create the curtains. So we'll go back up and choose Simulation. And then we can choose the Rectangle tool. And we want to do roughly double the size of one rail. Then we will create another rectangle roughly the size of one rail. and grab this edge and bring it down slightly. And if you hold this over, it should be just enough to encompass this uh, rail. So, then we will go ahead and bring this out a little bit and in 2D view, copy by Control V or C and control V and 
Then we'll grab that pattern and bring it down. We'll do the same thing with this pattern. And we'll bring them as close as we can to the rail. Now we need to flip the normal on this. So we'll right click and flip normal. Now that we have these three patterns made, we'll select this first and go ahead and sew them together. So this to this piece. And on the bottom, this to this piece. We'll go ahead and right click this piece of geometry and freeze. However, before we do that, let's help ourselves out and help the simulation out by increasing the particle distance size. So we'll select everything and go to our particle distance and let's say perhaps 40. What this does is if you look at wireframe mode, you'll notice our triangle count. If we reduce the number to something like 20, the triangles would be much smaller, which takes longer to process. We might even go something like 60 for now to just get the ball rolling. So let's choose this mesh and right click and freeze. Now that we have that frozen, let's simulate this, these two patterns to come together. Now that it's simulated, I can see that we need to pull it up just a little bit because it's going to have too much drag. So let's grab our edge select tool and we will grab these bottom edges here and here and by holding shift and then dragging up you can drag that edge slightly up. Let's go ahead and simulate again and that seems to be pretty good. We can decrease the particle size to perhaps 40 and simulate again. Now, with both selected, let's right click and choose Strengthen. Again, right click and then freeze. Now let's take this big pattern and unfreeze and we will sew this to the bottom of this. So choose the top of this pattern and the bottom of this pattern. And let's run the simulation. Now that we have our curtain created, let's stop the simulation by pressing spacebar and Let's create the other curtain by copy and pasting it onto this rail. So select everything. Right click first to to unfreeze. Then select everything by holding shift, copy, and copy and paste. Now let's take this geometry and nudge it over.
If we run the animation now, it may cause some issues because this is intersecting this. So to help it out, we can create a layer order. So since this is already practically over this one, let's go ahead and make this one over this one in the layers. So we'll choose this left side, go over to our properties and say layer one. That leaves this one under layer zero, the base layer. So we wanted to remember to first, before we run the simulation, right click, or perhaps easier in 2D view, right click and strengthen. And to assist, it might even be helpful to right click all of those top portions and freeze. Now let's run the simulation. And there you have it. So right now, the mesh is at a larger particle distance and it looks a little triangulated. So if you select both pieces of geometry and go to your particle distance, we can change that now to something a little bit smoother, maybe 30. Great. So now we can turn on shaded mode. And I'm going to create a new material. And then under this fabric, I'll just go ahead and choose the color red. And then I will grab this and just drag it over with the left mouse button. So we now have our curtains. Now, if we run the simulation, you'll notice that the curtains don't follow the animation. So we need to go back to the simulation and we need to pin this fabric to this avatar on both sides. So we'll go ahead and grab the pin to avatar tool up here. And we can choose here and here. And here and here. And then on the other side, the same thing. And now we're done. So let's go ahead and unfreeze these patterns and let's go to the animation tab. So we need to bake the animation. However, this takes some time. So I will come right back once it's done. Okay, so now that we're done, you can see that the animation has baked down. And if we run the animation, we can see it fully working. Okay, so now that the animation is completed here in Marvelous, let's bring this into Maya. So we need to go to File, Export, FBX. Give your file a name. And then we want to make sure the settings are as seen here. Especially make sure animation is checked and cache animation 
is also checked. We're still under centimeters, so that's good. And we'll hit OK. This is going to take a moment to process. And we'll be left with a FBX file, a Maya cache file, and an XML file to go with that cache. So I'll meet you in Maya. So now that we're back in Maya, we'll want to bring in the geometry from Marvelous. So we'll go to File, Import, choose our Curtains folder, and our FBX. You can see the curtains are now in the scene, but if we scrub the timeline, nothing is happening. So we need to select the curtains, go to Cache, Geometry Cache, Import Cache, select our Curtains folder, and then choose the XML and hit Open. Now if we scrub the timeline, you can see that we get our animation. And if we play, our curtains are working. So hopefully this has helped shed light on the pipeline from Maya to Marvelous and back to Maya. And I appreciate you watching the video and please remember to follow, like, and share.